Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to more Skyward Sword. Last episode, we entered the Sky Keep, and if you look at this, we've cleared out four of the eight rooms. And in this episode, we are going to go into this room and get, hopefully, two pieces of the Triforce. The key is in this room, and that will allow us access to the Triforce of Courage. And this room doesn't need any prerequisites, so we can just go on in and clear it out. So, without further ado, oh, also, we went th all through this, this, uh, the Fire Sanctuary room, and we reached the end. Now, if you're wondering how to get back to the doors, just like all rooms have, please let me, almost all rooms, you can just hit this, and now you can gain access to the beginning of this room, over here, or the end. Actually, conceivably, no, could you do that? I was going to say, can you start in this room? I assume so. Maybe you can't actually get this room, and you get to the top of this room, um, and you have to exit from the right. I don't know. Anyway, whatever the case was, we are going to go into the room with the key. Not the room with the view, although that is a fairly good book. I like it. Uh, got turned around there, going this way. And we're going to take a right, and... We will have adventure. Yes, adventure. Because if you look at this, this looks familiar already. And, yes, this seems very familiar. Isn't that Skurvo? And didn't we defeat him? No. This is LD003 Dreadfuse. And, <laughs> wonderful camera angle. <laughs> We're fighting a post. Um, LD003D Dreadfuse. This menacing robot guards Skykeep. It is thought to be of a similar model to the robot that stole Skipper's ship in Lene Rusansi. As before, when fighting in a narrow space like this, it is more effective to use thrust attacks with your sword than to try to sing your, swing your sword wildly. Okay, uh, real quick, before I press A, I want to talk about something. I mentioned in the first episode that I would be telling you guys where I think different attributes are tested. In this room, You'd think it'd be power because we're, we're fighting something, but I actually think that this is courage. My reasoning for this is the fact that we've, we've basically fought this guy before. He's just a carbon copy of Skurvo, just with a crown this time instead of a pirate hat. But, you know, when we fought Skurvo, that was a hard time, and that was because we, aren't, we weren't as powerful. So when fighting Dreadfuse, we're going to be feeling the same apprehension that we felt when fighting Skurvo, or at least I feel when fighting Skurvo. So, I would normally want to play it very safe and use shield, uh, shield bashes to play defensively. But this for this fight, I actually think that playing offensively is really, really the way to go. It, I'll show you how I mean, but if you just stab and just stay on him, actually, you shouldn't even target him. You should just be able to do that, and there we go. And there, if you just stay on the offensive, you you can knock him out like pie or cake, whatever the case is. So if you don't even target him and just make sure you face him, and then you can just really chase him down. Now stabs are the best, and uh, dash dash uh, dash jump attacks or jump strikes are clearly the way to go because you can chase him down easily. And there you go, and if you just stay on him, you can get him done in a couple of minutes. There we go, and dead. That was that was done in what? A minute? Two minutes? And that's why I think it just tests your courage, because it sees it's seeing if you can get over the fear that you're going to have the same train wreck that was the first fight with this guy and swing for the win. I really like that. So, with him out of the way, and already in, four minutes into the episode, we're having a lot of excitement. Um, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to test your courage this way. Do not jump down here. Just don't. Because it's practically game over. Practically. Uh, this, is, this is a glitch right here. If you jump through into the, the abyss, you'll respawn on top of the abyss, and you'll fall to your death repeatedly. 
Now, because there's no fall damage in this game, you'll be stuck here until you go, you reset the Wii and go back to your last save file. So, this is actually very, very bad news bears. Do not jump in here. It's actually very similar to the glitch that we, that I found in, um, the Eld in Elden's Silent Realm, where you can roll through a wall and just respawn and fall to your death in lava over and over again. So, yeah, don't do that. Just don't. Unless you want to work all through this dungeon again. Instead, just stay, keep your distance from the ledge, and just claw shot across. And, if you dr drop, <laughs> then you can just grab a key, and this is the key to the, uh, the courage room, the Triforce of Courage room, which we will be accessing this episode. But for now, if you go through this door, you will have access to a control panel. Now, because I already have things arranged how I want them, let me get up here, you can see that we just have to go to, go to the left, and we can go to Triforce of Power Room. I'm not going to be arranging anything, though I will be backtracking to do that after we're done with this room. So, this room, because it's the Triforce of Power and it's red, it's very reminiscent of not the Fire Sanctuary, but the Fire Temple, because there's a lot, a lot more lava in this one than the f than the fire sanctuary room master i have information for you i have detected a source of sacred power somewhere within this chamber hey idiot go to the left <laughs> if you find a way through the river of magma i calculate a 60 percent chance you'll arrive at one of the sources of sacred power only 60 i recommend you press forward in search of the power present here now you'll see there are two doors now this door right here is basically the midpoint of the room, and so they allow you to go backwards in case you fall in the lava and respawn here. So then you can just go to the midpoint. This one, this door right here is also locked, and that will lead us to the complete other side of the area. So we'll be backing, backtracking through that once we have the Triforce of Power. So, this area is very reminiscent of, as you can see, the Fire Temple. Now, starting right off, there are some keys here down the river. I want to kill them with my beetle, because I discovered that the beetle can kill keys. I didn't know that until a previous take of this episode. So that's really neat. So, we're going to go and drop the water fruit and grab the whip, because the keys will be coming to bug us. There we go. And, okay, there's one switch I want to hit, and I can do that with the beetle. You want to hit that switch way over there. I can hit it with arrows, but the beetle conserves my ammo. There it is. And because we did because we did that, that will allow the current to take us when we drop onto that platform over there. See, so yeah, I want my scatter shot. I'm going to use my scatter shot because we do need uh we will need arrows this episode and I don't want to waste them. Instead, I will just use the scatter shot on that and jump down. Now I want to switch to my bow, because I will need that. Jump down, and immediately you want to turn to the, to the right and hit that crystal switch up there. Because otherwise, because there are two equal currents converging at the same point, there would be no current right about here at the midpoint, and you just sink. And no one likes a sinking ship. Well, almost no one. Anyway. I'll, I'll bypass that. Let's not go down that th thought train right now. So, this will lead you to the midpoint of the room, right there, where you can access the beginning again. Now, there is a silver rupee in this room, and I'll be showing it once we get to this midpoint. Hopefully, there we go. It's very slow moving. And jump. Okay. Now, the silver rupee is over here. You want to fly over this way, and the silver ruby is, uh, you could see it right there, let me try again, okay, let me speed over there, and there, there's the silver ruby, now you want to actually send the beetle out again, oh, first let's, let's hit this switch, okay, now we can get back to the beginning, so, uh, you want to actually send out the beetle again, and you want to hit, uh, there's a switch all the way around here, right up, right there. You want to hit that, 
and that will s uh, that will flip flop the flow of lava, or is it magma? I think it's lava because we're not in a volcano, and that will flip flop the flow so that you can get to that floating platform there. Uh, another thing, there are a lot of things you should do before you go ahead and jump in the river, and that thing is kill these curse keys, or kill one of them. That's fine. Right there, that then it, that'll be less trouble. Let's go ahead and hit that with our whip. And jump down. Now the keys will bother us again, but because we did all the prerequisites, prerequis we have more time to deal with the keys than we would have. Now you do not want these keys to hit you. Um, uh, of course, you don't want any keys to hit you, but these especially. Because they're cursed keys, they'll make it so you can't use your items, so that you won't be able to save yourself and you'll just fall to the lava. So these guys actually kind of have a... have a double uh, double inconvenience if they do hit you. Now let's go ahead and jump to that. Oh, barely made it. And that sank. Wow, that was close. Okay. Now going across this, this river, there's nothing we really have to do while on this river, so we can just stay here. And I can tell you guys something that I actually haven't told you during the entire LP. And I'm really, really surprised that I haven't. And that is, well, well, I'll tell you, then I'll tell you some stuff behind that. Um, I never mentioned that one of the reasons why I'm doing a clean, I'm running a clean LP channel is because I am a Christian. I didn't tell you that during the entire Let's Play. And I'm really surprised. Oh, come on, down, come down, come down, come down, come down. Yes. That was so close. Okay. Uh, let me let me clear this out, and then I will continue my thought process. You want to uh, bring the beetle back around and hit the switch again, and that'll flip flop the flow again. Try saying that three times fast, and that will allow you to go on the current, the new current, and then you want to whoa, and then once this rises back up, you want to hit that water fruit. Anyway, I'm a Christian. I haven't told you during the entire let's play. I actually did. Back when we were in the ancient cistern, let's go ahead and shoot this now. Hurry. Okay. There. Okay, anyway. Uh, I told you back in the ancient cistern, however, I told you in a failed take. That take was not used, so you guys never knew. So, yeah. I am a Christian, and that's why I do clean LPs. So, yeah. I just wanted to tell you that, because... I was actually having a conversation with one of my viewers. Um, I won't tell you... Well, okay. Hopefully she won't mind that I'm telling you who. Uh, Dee Dee Hensley. You've seen her in the comments a couple times, hopefully. Um, Dee Dee Hensley. I was in conversation with her, and I realized that I hadn't told my viewers that I was a Christian. And I was like, I should tell them. So I did. And, yeah, so I decided that I should tell you before any more time goes by. Now, while I've been talking about this, I haven't explained what we're doing. But it's pretty linear, so you guys probably kn saw. Yeah. Master Link, you have reached the mark. Offer your sword to it. If you do this, I calculate a high probability that you'll be shown the way to part of the Triforce. Okay. Yeah, I'm a Christian, and... So, yeah, that's the reason why I don't swear in my episodes, and... It's just a habit that I think is good. There are many other logical re uh, there are other logical reasons than um, I'm a Christian, although that is very logical, um, and I'll go into those in a second. But yeah, I just wanted to tell you that. Now, anything else I should explain? I don't think so. Okay, so yeah, we just had to go across that lava, and now we can thrust our sword into this emblem. Uh -huh. Hey, literally, it's fire emblem. It's literally a fire emblem. Huh. <laughs> I made a pun. And this will lead us to the Silent Realm. No, there is no... There isn't another Silent Realm challenge. But the Triforce pieces exist in the Silent Realm. So let's go ahead and grab that one. You've got the Triforce of Power. Created by the old gods, the Triforce possesses ultimate power and is said to grant the wishes of whoever possesses it. Just two more pieces to go. Now... Um, another logical reason, I think I, I might have mentioned this in the beginning of the LP, but I'm going to mention it again now that I'm a little bit more articulate and I can talk about my thoughts a little bit easier without stuttering. Um, there are other reasons why I'm a clean Let's Play channel, and 
those are the fact that, okay, swearing, as a lot of people use it, actually isn't how it's supposed to be used. Obviously, you can use swearing to, well, swear and pledge yourself to something. And also, this switch opens up the way to the beginning, so we want to hit that. Um, but some people don't even use it as, you know, as a pledge, as a swear, as it's supposed to be used. You know, they drop the F-bomb, and it they're using it as a curse word, not a swear word. Now, first of all, I don't really care about cursing anything. I'm not sure about you guys, but I don't like cursing anything, so I don't do that. Also, another way people use it is to substitute the um, substitute saying um for swearing. And that is, if they can't think of something or a descriptive word to describe something, they just throw in a, a curse word. And that apparently has solved their their issue of not being able to articulate their thoughts because we have a lot of channels that people aren't entirely clean. And that's because they just can't articulate they, their thoughts or they've just grown in habit of throwing in these swear words to help you pay attention to what they're saying. And I don't like this because I think that just like face cams, uh, it's kind of a substitute for having to have good commentary. So, you know, face cams are used to portray your emotion. If you're laughing, people will see that you're smiling, or something like that. If you're scared, then people will see you're, that you're scared. I, now, I don't think face cams are, are a no-no for all LPs. I mean, obviously, horror games, it's actually fun to have a face cam, because you can see how literally scared and freaked out they are. Or you can see them looking over their shoulder in a dark room. But for normal LPs, like, say, I don't know, Battle Block Theater... Um, I don't think that face cams are a good thing to have because that just substitute good that is just a substitute for having good commentary. And the same my opinion for cussing and swearing. And that is I'd rather have the person stutter than for them to be throwing out all these swear words because it's not a clean thing to think about and you know it kind of pollutes the mind and also it's just not healthy. So, that's why I don't swear, because I'm trying to become a good commentator and to articulate my thoughts. Because before this LP started, I would stutter a lot. Now, I didn't throw in curse words, but because I've only actually cursed once in my life. But I just, I would throw in all of these ums, and I would just pause my sentences mid-speaking, mid and... I just couldn't talk very well, and that's one of the reasons why I began this channel. I wanted to be able to, um, to be able to have my thoughts come across to other people, and I want my claw shots there. And that's one of the reasons why I began this channel, because I wanted to practice talking. Because as you can, <laughs> as you guys can tell, I do have the gift of gab. However, how I how I applied it before I started this channel is stuttering. So I wanted to fix that, so I began this channel. It almost seems like I'm wrapping up the LP, and in a sense, I am, because we only have a handful of episodes left. We have probably three, two to three episodes left in the story of this game, and I want to make sure that some of my thoughts are gotten across. So, let's carry on. Also, when I grew up, my parents didn't swear because I grew up in a Christian home, and my parents didn't cuss or swear, and, well, they, they did a tiny bit, but, yeah. Um, I took it kind of to the next level by not even saying, you know, um, quote-unquote, quote, crude words, and that I just voluntarily did, I don't know. Anyway, let's, hopefully it, it doesn't, isn't distracting to you guys, because sometimes, during very, you know, during some words, you know, I don't say them. Oh, I need to go back. I'm trying to, I'm talking, but I'm not thinking about what I'm actually doing. Um, so sometimes, you know, I, I find ways to f go around these words. Like, um, instead of saying, I put it on screen right now. I, I say, well, I used to say ice, but now I say, oh, my word, you know. I hope you, that isn't distracting, because it does seem like I'm cir circumventing normal speech patterns, and I actually am. And I... Okay, I need to stop talking about this, because I went in the wrong room again. Oh, wait, no. No, I'm good. Am I?
No, I'm good. Okay. I thought I need to go to that panel, but I actually should go to this panel so I can move this room over here. Because if you remember, last episode we got the key to this room, so we want to move this around. And I don't really like the fact that I'm kind of, I'm practically dancing across this passageway, because that, that has a glitch that you don't want to go. If you jump down there, you content, you're caught in a loop of respawning on over midair and, jump, and falling down again. So I'm kind of tempting quote-unquote fate right now. Oh, and that's another thing. <laughs> uh, but before I go into that, let me move this room around, because then I can concentrate on what I'm doing. Okay, so we're moving the Ferrara room over here. Does that have a control panel in it? No, it doesn't. Huh. Let's move... Okay, let's move this. No, we can't. Okay, well, I'll, I'll just leave this be right now. Okay, that's another thing. How I mentioned earlier in the LP, and that door shuts, that I don't believe in luck, and that's because I don't. I don't think that there's something... That there is an outside force governing whether or not we find a penny, or whether or not we we fail or succeed in a video game. I just don't think that there is. Now, there is definitely... Hopefully I'm not making this uncomfortable for you guys. There is definitely a force that is guiding all of this, and that would be God, because, you know, I'm a Christian. Um, but I don't think that, you know, God would... I don't know. It does depend on the circumstance, but, you know, I don't think that God would make us lose at, like, the lottery unless he was trying to teach us a lesson. I don't know, but I just don't really believe in luck. So anyway, I guess a better example of that would be throwing salt over your left shoulder. I don't think that that would make things better for you. I don't think God would make us waste salt in order to make things better. So anyway, let, I'm going to stop ranting about this because this has gone on for, I don't know, 10 minutes, 5. So I'm going to stop. Now, this room, we haven't gone in before, but let me explain. This is reminiscent of the basement or the lower area of the ancient cistern. Also, it reminds me a lot of Wind Waker's Ganon's Tower. I think that's kind of what we were, they were going for. But anyway, right off, we can see there is the emblem right there for the Triforce of Courage. And Fee's going to tell us that. Master, look over that way. The design carved into the floor there is the Mark of Furore. I detect the sacred power of the Triforce emanating from its vicinity. Man, I love talking like that. To reach the area where that mark is located, I propose you pass through the door in front of you. Okay, just one moment. Okay, sorry, I had to deal with allergies. Okay. Um, now, normally I, I say that if there are there's a statue with eyes, you want to maneuver the beetle inside of, the, inside of them. But in this case, there's actually nothing inside. Very strange, but there is nothing there. And sorry if you guys did something, heard something, because I just accidentally bumped the mic, so sorry about that. Okay, so now that we have a key, let's go inside, and I can stop ranting and raving about my beliefs, although, yeah, I won't go into that, because that would bring up another topic. Anyway, this is the fight room, basically. Let's go ahead and weaken this guy with our bow. Uh, can I hit him? There we go. I missed. Okay, let's grab our shield. Ow. Okay, let me turn up so I can hear him. There we go. And there, he pushed us behind him. Oh, wow. No! I accidentally pressed the A button. Snap. Well, he's dead, but I lost a heart. Not from him, but because I pressed A. All right, then. Let's continue on, and let's pelt this guy with arrows, actually. I want to kill him with arrows only. Let's move back. Okay, don't worry about wasting arrows, because this is one of the places where you need arrows. Where I talked about earlier that I'm saving arrows. I think I said that last episode. No, I said it this episode, okay. So it took him, like, five arrows. The Sacred Bow, which is the bow that we have, I believe is more powerful than the Master Sword. Fully charged? I think it is. That's why we can kill these guys in fewer hits.
Okay, sorry sorry about me just standing there. I was just watching the volume levels, making sure that the background music isn't too loud for you guys. Now, this room, let me explain what's happening here. This room is full of bokoblins, or bokoblins as some people call them. So, you want to take out as many as you can with your bow. You can take out, actually, all of them with your bow, almost from here. So, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Now, there are a couple of Stalfos in there. Actually, for a challenge, I'm just going to bolt on in. Also, there are two treasures which I want to grab. There we go. And uh, there are more archers that I haven't gotten. There we go. Whoa! Which, one of the Bokoblins set us on fire. Okay. He took him out in four hits. Let's go ahead and uh, miss you. There we go. And he's going to hit us. There we go. And there we go. He's dead. And let's go ahead and shoot this one. Boom. There we go. Now there is a bomb up here, so you, when you're when you are right here, right when you enter, you don't want to be too close to this wall because if he hits the bomb with his arrow, he will hit you, I believe. So yeah. Is there a heart in here? Good. Now, because the music is still playing, the battle is not over. In fact, this is the last battle room. Actually, the last battle room in the entire dungeon. So let's go in here and. You can see there's a Stal Lord. Wait, no, that's not that, that's not his name. Sorry, Stal Master. I'm thinking of the wrong Zelda game. So there's Stal Master, and also there are cursed Bokoblins that were, will bug us while this is happening. Now, for this guy, I actually don't advise you. I don't advise you to shield bash. I I, I advise you to backflip because that he's just. I think he's actually too quick for you to be able to shield bash him effectively. Even even with lightning reflexes, I just don't... I think he's just too fast. Okay. Whoa! Okay. Uh, hit him, hit him, jump back. Hit him, hit him, jump back. Hit him, hit him. Okay, let's deal with these Bokoblins. There we go. And he's going to do a four-hit attack. It looks like three, but he has one more hit. That's kind of a tricky hit. And... There we go. Whoa! Back! Three hits. Two, three, and four. And spin tech these. And... There we go. And stab. Whoa! Backflip. Oh, I missed. Okay. This guy it can do a lot of damage. This guy is still hard, even though we have the, be the awesome sword. Whoa! There we go. Hit him. Hit him. There we go. Backflip. And hit. Hit swing and swing there we go and hit him and jump back and hit him again jump back and hit him hit him jump whoa that i did not anticipate okay this is his last phase he just has a couple of hits left whoa okay nope if he blocks you just once he'll immediately go into his hit phase there we go if he puts all of his swords like that you can stab him even when he blocks you can stab him so, like that. In fact, I'm going to do that. Whoa. Stab. There we go. That did him in. Whew, he is hard. I, I won't, I'll give him that. He's very hard. And also, he dropped a fairy. I believe he always drops a fairy. However, I'm not going to get that fairy. Because I want to show something off. I didn't show this during the last two Triforce pieces. So I want to show it with, or the last Triforce piece, so I want to show it off with this. Once you get the Triforce, it actually heals you completely, which is actually very nice of the designers to throw that in. So, here's the Triforce of Courage. Although, is this the Triforce of Courage? No, this is the, yeah, this is the Triforce of Courage. Although, I think it tests your power more than it tests your courage. Okay, good. Because I kind of see our heart gauge as being symbolic of power, and it really taxes our heart gauge more than um, Dreadfuse did. So, neat, we have two Triforce pieces, and we got them both this episode. Now, I would get the last piece, but this episode is, is running a little bit long, so I think I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching. I release Skyward Sword episodes Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and Saturdays are long episodes. And Pikmin is going on right now, so I release those Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So I release a new video game episode every single day except Sunday. And that actually makes sense. 
uh, based on what I said earlier that I'm Christian. I am keeping, I'm saving Sundays aside for uh, someone greater than I. So, anyway, hopefully you guys didn't mind me talking about that, but that's my beliefs, and yeah, I, I'd, I'm obligated to share them. So, I will see you next episode for another pal, for another pal play Skyward Sword, and in between episodes I'll plug in my computer, because it's almost dead. Okay, see you guys next time.